Happy Independence Day, everybody. Today on Drink Smoke Build, we're going to be cleaning the pool, talking about the massive amount of rain and the leveling issues, and of course, treating the pool before we swim on this beautiful 4th of July. After this. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Today, we're gonna be going through and talking about everything that's happened since we started this pool build, all of the rain, and all of the craziness that has surrounded putting up this pool. And we're gonna get it filled back up, get it treated, and being the 4th of July, we're gonna be celebrating, doing some cooking out, and of course, swimming in the pool today. So let's go ahead and get to that. So if you guys remember in the last video, we drained the pool down to that band, to the very top of that band, which was draining off about 24 inches of water after we got a couple of huge storms that overflowed us and caused a dip in the pool as I talked about in the last video. As you can see, we have had a lot of rain even since then, uh, I don't know, about 12 inches or so, and it has brought it up darn near the intake for the pump. Well, I don't want to overweight the pool and my kids don't mind if it's not full all the way to the top, they'll still have a good time anyway. So we are gonna go ahead and fill it to where it is about an inch or so, about right here above the intake so that we are getting a good intake for the pump, but not filling it up all the way and putting as much pressure as we could on this wall. So let's go ahead and walk around and talk about the wall. So the two spots that we've been having problems, this one right here, this is the first spot and this wasn't from the rain. This just started to sink because it wasn't on, both of these really started to sink because they weren't really on the ground cover and the sand got wet from us washing our feet, getting it out of the pool and that's caused it to sink down in. Now, oddly enough, it didn't sink so far enough down in that it really created a level problem. These pools over here were just a tad low and this is really where our level problem was. And as you can tell, they're on the ground cover, but still managed to mash the sand down a couple of inches. Over here, which is our disaster of an issue, We have a river that was created from the masses of amounts of rain that we've gotten over the last two weeks. In fact, I think it's right around 24 inches for the last two weeks. That's just absolutely crazy for any time in Oklahoma, but especially in the middle of the summer. So what we're gonna do is, so wait, before I get to that. So this right here, this is, the pole that has sunk down the most. And as you can tell, it doesn't look like it's sunk down too much, but it's because the water ran around the pool, ran underneath the tarp, washed all the sand away, washed all this sand away, and washed it down this way. And if you guys remember in the very first pool video I made, I said I was thinking about putting timbers here to keep this from happening and like an idiot I didn't and we get all of the sand washing out. So my plan, not in this video, but my plan is once 
we've stopped with all the rain. We're supposed to have three solid days of sunshine and no rain. On that third day, hopefully everything's dried out enough that I can come through, I can rake all this dirt or all this fill sand back into where it's supposed to be, put that extra retaining wall in there between the garden box and the edge of the original retaining wall. And then once all this sand has been filled in and we put in the fill dirt around the edge of the retaining wall, which I'm also having a problem with, I hadn't gotten to that yet and we had some of the rain push out the sand along the retaining wall, which I'll show you guys here. You can actually see how it pushed quite a bit out there. And then of course in this corner over here, which I thought I had packed in pretty well, but obviously not well enough. So, so we will end up putting in along the outside edge, we'll put in some of this fill dirt that we have over here already to keep that from washing out. And then of course, put in a um, extra set of timbers over here to keep this sand from washing out anymore. But it needs to be dry and it needs to not have been raining for the last two weeks. So hopefully, like I said, this is gonna be the first break we really get of any substantial length. Like I said, it's gonna be three days long. So let's go ahead and get this done at the end of that three days. And I'll put that in part five. But I just wanted to show this to you guys, show you that with all the rain, I really haven't been able to do anything. So now that it is sunny and we don't have to worry about the rain, we're getting the pool filled back up. We're gonna get the kids in, but first, we're gonna need to get in here and clean, suck up all that crap that I should have sucked up a week ago. We're gonna get that all cleaned out and uh, get some chemicals. I'm not gonna shock it because I do want them to swim today. So I'm gonna take my uh, measurements on the uh, chlorine and the pH, and then from there, treat it um, accordingly. So let's go ahead and get to that now. Okay, so we're back and the water level is exactly where we wanted it. Just above the intake, which you can see kind of sort of right there and right there. So that's exactly where we wanted it. And that's exactly where we have it. So now I am going to run to the store and pick up some chlorine test strips because evidently I'm out. I thought I had a whole bottle and I don't. So it's 4th of July and the only place that's open is Walmart and I hate going there, but I guess that's where I'm going to go. So I'm going to go grab some test strips and then when I get back, I'm going to test the water, see exactly what it is. I'm going to treat it and then I'm going to get in and I'm going to clean it. And then I'm going to test it again and then see if I need to add any more chemical at that point. So we'll be back to clean this here in a second. All right, I'm back from the store. Got my test strips that test for all sorts of different things. And all I really care about is the pH and the free chlorine and total chlorine. So let's go ahead and plunge this guy in, see where we're at. I remember this is untreated water. This is just what's out of the tap, rainwater, and then what was already in there. Sorry guys, if I'm not speaking loud enough, I'll try to speak up, talk a little louder over this massive generator sound that we got going, but unfortunately it's the only way that I can run the pump right now because when it rains as much as it has and floods everything, the only way to get power out here is through those flooded areas. And I don't wanna mess with running electrical cords through water. So I'm using the generator. All right, let's go ahead point this guy down in it says elbow deep Put that back on you don't want to get those all wet all right and then let's take a look here together 
Oh, that looks closest to that one up top. So our total hardness is 250. That's okay. Our total chlorine, as you can tell, is pretty much as low as it can be since we haven't treated it. We are at low and very low. <laughs> the uh, pH also very low. Total alkalinity is low and the stabilizer is low. So we'll go ahead, we'll get in, we'll get this guy cleaned out and then we will treat it, test it again. Oh, this is going to be cold. I'm not looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. All right, you guys. Oh, 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 oh. oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I can't just jump in. All right, you guys. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible because we've got the generator going and my phone. Middle of the day. Sunny. 85 of course my phone has a tendency to overheat all phones cameras do when it's too hot so i got a little bit of shade over it use my hat so hopefully we're going to go for a little bit but i wanted to make sure you guys see how i vacuum now they make attachments to hook it to the inlet and all that to suck from the pump well all this big nasty stuff over here and all the bugs and everything I don't want to suck all of that into the filter so I am going to siphon it out yes I'll lose a little bit of water that way but that's okay and instead of having to put the hose down in the uh, water all the way to get it to work. One quick trick I wanna show you is you can prime it by using the pump. Pump that water in there, hold it for a little bit. Make sure you're getting some flow out the other end. We are, done. Bada bing, bada boom. You've got a siphon. All right, so we'll hook it up to our little vac attachment here oh yeah that's working nicely and let's slowly work our way across by the way I have weighted the end of the hose down over here and I'll show you that here in just a second after I finish doing this we're gonna slowly move in to all this nastiness oh no I pulled the hose out oh don't let it get above the water We'll lose my vacuum. Well, son of a gun. Didn't know that was possible. Literally popped the flex piece out of the pin. Hopefully that stays. There we go. I'm not gonna worry too much about shocking it today. Maybe if we uh, get some more days or it's not swimmable, maybe we'll do it then. Maybe we never will. Maybe we never have to. Now we're going to suck all the stuff off the top. cool to watch isn't it? June bug! Oh, lost, didn't lose suction but it's, there we go, now it's coming back. If it gets weak but it's still there, pull a vacuum on it a few times and that usually will get it going. Actually, let's go reprime it. There we go. I think we pretty much got most everything on the surface. A few pieces of grass and a couple of little flying ants. That's about it. 
Well, I could do this little tiny like mosquitoes and flying ants all day long and still not get them all, so. I don't want to uh, drain out all the water and we're about where I want it to be. So, I think we're good to go. Kill the suction on this thing. Treat it, check it one more time, then get everybody in to celebrate 4th of July. Okay, so unfortunately, you guys, my phone overheated, of course, after 30 seconds, and I just did a whole chlorinating bit and testing the water and all that good stuff. Well, unfortunately, overheating camera didn't catch it. So we're gonna go ahead and test the water one more time. I wanna let you guys know we did put in 28 ounces of the chlorine solution. It calls for 13 ounces per 10,000 gallons for one PPM. We put in our 10,000 gallon pool, we put in 28 ounces and I did a quick check. We're gonna do it one more time and show you guys what it showed. By the way, I also ran around the pool like 10 times to get a swirl going. Get that swirl going and then test the water. That way we tried to get it all mixed in so I don't have to wait a couple hours for the pump to get it all mixed in. All right, so let's go ahead and test. So you wanna do the strip down to your elbow. And I can't get it that far, but we'll mix it around. Bring it up, compare it to your bottle. And would you look at that? Oh, I was gonna say that's the wrong spot. There we go. Ideal, a little over one ppm, which is ideal. The free chlorine is a little low, but that's okay. Total chlorine's where I want it to be. Just want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. Don't forget. Mashy mashy on that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't. And of course, hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I put out a new video. Speaking of which, I've got my first ever cooking video on the channel coming out, doing some 4th of July barbecuing right here on Drink Smoke Build. Make sure that you subscribe. That's coming out tomorrow. Much love you guys. Billy D, Drink Smoke Build, swimming on out of here. We'll see you in the next one.